All right. So another example with motional EMF, but in this case, we've got a bar that's falling. So this is a vertically oriented thing. The bar is here, and it's falling down, but it remains in contact with these other two bars the whole time as it slides down. They don't provide any friction force. It's like a, a frictionless fall here. So let's look at the forces acting on this object. As we've seen, when something moves through uh, this sort of situation, it actually is a backwards force uh, that is generated based on the current that's induced in the situation. So we can kind of see that that's the, the correct direction by using the right hand rule. So as this bar is moving downwards, our positive charges in there are moving downwards. As they go into the board, that means that we get a force here to the left. And so that means that we get a current induced to the left. And now that we know there's a current going that direction, we can point our fingers this way and say that we're going to get a magnetic force that's upwards. So as this object falls, uh, this is going to be the forces. Depending on the speed that it's traveling, uh, well, the weight doesn't change, but the magnetic force does. When it's not moving, there's no magnetic force. And if it's moving very quickly, there's a much larger magnetic force. Let's take a look at the equation we had last time for the strength of the magnetic force. All right, so here are the equations we get. Combining the two equations that we know, the, the uh, force on a wire with the uh, BLV, which was our value for the uh, motional EMF, the magnetic field times the length of the rod or the width of the rod uh, that's in the magnetic field times the, volt, uh, the velocity over the resistance in the loop, which we're given here. And so using this expression right here, we can figure out what the force is. And so in this case, here's what we can see. The magnetic force is proportional to the velocity. As it speeds up, the force increases. Um, if this object is going very quickly, then the upward force would be large and probably larger than the weight. If it was not moving at all, then this force would be zero and the object would be accelerating downwards 9.8 meters per second squared due to gravity. So somewhere in between, we get a point where the magnetic force is equal to the weight, the gravitational force. So if now we have a graph with the magnetic force here and the gravitational force there, well, at this velocity, the two forces would be equal. If the bar was traveling slower, well, then the gravitational force would be uh, winning out and it would speed up. And if, the, if it was traveling faster than this velocity, the magnetic force would be larger and it would slow down. And so this is actually a version of terminal velocity where the object will slow down and it will travel at a constant speed downwards once these two forces are balanced right there. Now what we can do is we could actually set these two equations equal to another. This one equals mg and solve for v. Let's do that now. And there we have it. All we do is plug this in, do a little bit of algebra, and we found a velocity that an object will travel at in this sort of situation. It's interesting to see if you were to uh, decrease the resistance it would decrease that, that maximum velocity because the current would be larger in that case, which means that the force would be larger. And uh, you can kind of go through all of those different situations. Now, one thing to think about, in the previous problem we looked at and said that the force, applied force, was what was causing the energy in this circuit. And in this circuit as well, the energy comes from the change in gravitational potential energy of this bar, if you include gravitational potential energy in your system. And so as it falls down, that's where that energy is coming from that we see that's getting dissipated in the resistor. And it's causing it to travel at a constant velocity downwards here. All right. See you in class.